Hey guys, after more than 15 years, I finally bought the video card I wish I had bought back in the day. It is the legendary NVIDIA GeForce 8800 GTX. And the story of this video card is really interesting. At launch, it showcased what NVIDIA can do when it is faced with heavy competition. But during its lifetime, it also showcased how NVIDIA operates when there is no competition. Also guys, I'm now on Patreon and you will get access to behind the scenes material, extended gameplays, pickups, early impressions and also access to our private Discord server. Before the 8800 GTX launched, the competition was healthy. We had interesting video cards from both Team Red and Team Green and each one of them would outdo each other. It was a golden time for the consumer. We got value video cards as well as high-end graphics cards. If you were more budget oriented, you could even get video cards with shaders that could be unlocked. Nvidia went all out with this GPU. It's manufactured on a 90 nanometer process with almost 700 million transistors. And in terms of size, it's almost 500 square millimeters. The G80 GPU has 128 cores. We have 768 megabytes of GDDR3 memory connected with a huge 384-bit memory bus. All of this translated into massive performance. Here we have some historic benchmarks from Anantec's launch review. And yeah, in short, the 8800 GTX was faster than two 7900 GTX video cards in SLI. The performance was simply jaw-dropping and ATI simply didn't have an answer. They launched the Radeon 2900 XT but it was a disappointment and even the next video card, the 3870, couldn't compete and could not beat the 8800 GTX. So this meant if you bought the 8800 GTX at launch for around two years, which is an absolute lifetime in the GPU video card history. Yeah, you could sit back, relax, and you had top level performance for a very long time without having to upgrade. All of that performance, of course, came at a price. I used the Wayback Machine to find some historic prices. Here we have a GPU price list from Scorptech in Australia. You would have to pay around 800 Australian dollars to buy this video card. I remember the launch of this video card very well. At the time I had a GeForce 7900 GTO and I really wanted to buy this video card but it was just too expensive. I waited a little bit longer and bought the 8800 GTS 320. That video card had amazing performance and then later of course the 8800 GT like many of you guys also purchased. So just like the gamers could relax and enjoy our high-end video card for around two years, NVIDIA sort of did the same. They had no need to innovate and we saw the same GPU in various new versions with the 8800 GT and then we got the 9800 GT and then the 9800 GTX, the GTS 512, the GTX Plus. Basically the same card with slightly different flavors. The version I bought is from Elite Tech, the WinFast PX8800 GTX TDH and didn't have to do any maintenance, no repasting or cleaning. It worked straight out of the box and it successfully ran all the tests and benchmarks. Our test system today, we have a Gigabyte motherboard P31S3G. I flashed the latest BIOS from 2008. For the CPU, we've got the Intel Core 2 Duo E8600. That one has six megabytes of cache and runs at 3.33 gigahertz. Four gigabytes of RAM, DDR2800 in dual channel configuration. For storage, we have a 240 gigabyte Western Digital Green and the Fire Hazard 600 watt power supply. We're using Windows XP 32-bit Service Pack 3, the XP Pro version. Now I was thinking of using Windows Vista. This video card does support DirectX 10, but I think it really shines under Windows XP. But back in the day, this video card was awesome. You could use a dual boot machine, XP and Vista, and use the best of both worlds. I'm installing Windows XP with the easy to boot project. This lets you install from a USB thumb drive. Hold down the shift key when you see the splash 
screen for loading a faster USB 2 storage driver. Snappy Driver Installer Origin installs all the chipset drivers, but I made sure to unselect the graphics drivers. For the graphics, we have the NVIDIA driver version 182.06. This one is from 2009 and it has worked well with all the games we're testing today. Let's run our usual benchmarks. In 3 Mark 2001 SE, we're getting 60,527. In 03, 41,086. And in 05, we're getting 19,835. Far Cry with ultra details across all the resolutions, we're getting around 170 FPS. That is absolutely beautiful. This is Doom 3 Ultra Details. The textures uncompressed fit really nicely into the VRAM of this video card. At 1600 by 1200, we're still getting 200 FPS. That is fantastic. Half-Life 2 Lost Coast with all the details maxed out. Even here, 1600 by 1200, 186.5 FPS. You can't complain about that. This is Fear, a very demanding Windows XP era game. Maximum details, but in this benchmark run without the soft shadows and we can see 156 FPS at 1600 by 1200. Enabling soft shadows, we can see it's getting more demanding for the video card, but even with these high settings, 85 FPS at 1600 by 1200. Not a bad video card, but can it run Crisis? Here we have Crisis running at full HD resolution, 1080p, with all the details maxed out. Now remember, under DirectX 9, which we are running here under Windows XP, you will not get all the graphics effects, but it still looks absolutely beautiful. And it runs the game well. We are a little bit further into the game compared to what I'm showing in most videos. That's because I got carried away a little bit and played a little bit more. And yeah, so all in all, this video card, yes, it can run crosses. The game we are playing today is really awesome. It is Bioshock. It launched in 2007 and developed by 2K Boston as well as 2K Australia. This game is from a really interesting era in video gaming. We had the consoles, the next gen consoles, Xbox 360 and the PS3. And it started that trend of getting console ports on the PC, but Bioshock had enough going for it to be superior on the PC. The big one, of course, is the resolution. Instead of running at 720p, yeah, you can play at 1080p or even higher, crank up and isotropic filtering, and even use super sampling, anti-aliasing, if your video card is fast enough. The story behind Bioshock is really interesting. I don't want to give away too much because if you haven't played it, there's not much replayability uh, once you understand what this story is about. The game involves an underwater city of Rapture and it's a failed utopia with the society yeah, totally collapsing. There are elements of genetic mutation with a substance called Adam and yeah, this game is really unique. The, the art style, the music, the sound effects, the graphics, it really stood out and it was totally different than most of the other games from that era. For me, it is also a good memory of when Steam, the Steam platform, was actually really decent. Nowadays, I'm not a big fan of Steam anymore. They cut us out of our retro gaming library. XP unsupported, Vista unsupported, very soon the same will happen to Windows 7 and Windows 8. But back in those days, I remember Steam was absolutely amazing. It wasn't flooded and over, overcrowded with uh, indie games and uh, games that were not really that great. It was pretty much every release was a triple A PC game, gaming title. And I remember they ran all sorts of promotions around Christmas, I believe, every day we would, uh, the, when I say we, uh, on Whirlpool, there's a gaming community, we would stay up until midnight or something like that to see what the new game release was. And they were all fantastic hits, games like Dead Space, Bioshock, of course, and Stalker, and yeah, I picked them all up, they're still in my gaming library. 
Bioshock runs under Windows XP but also Windows Vista. Under Vista you will get DirectX 10 with some slight improvements to the graphics. I don't believe or I'm not sure these small graphics details are worth upgrading to Vista. It will run perfectly fine under Windows XP which we're doing here and maybe it's even more stable under Windows XP. I didn't have any issues. The only issue I faced was some stuttering with the audio. At the moment I don't have access to all my parts. I'm using the Realtek onboard sound chip of the Gigabyte motherboard but I have a, a Sound Blaster ODG underway and I will test again. Leave a comment down below if that fixed the audio issues that I'm encountering. Speaking of audio, if you're playing under Windows XP and you have a Sound Blaster x sound card, do check the PC Gaming Wiki. It has some tweaks that you need to do to get the nice EAX5 sound and then you are in for a treat. This game oozes with atmosphere and yes, this is a game you want to play late night with headphones another one of those games because it just brings so much extra to the table. It is a first person shooter but you don't have to kill everything. There are some little puzzles and uh, there's hacking involved where you can hack uh, turrets and little robots that yeah, help you out and fight for you. So you don't have to fight everything. Look around in the environment. Sometimes there is uh, water and you can lure the enemies there and then shock them and they will get electrocuted. So use the environment, use your wits a little bit. But of course, if you enjoy uh, shooting and killing everything, then you can do that as well. So there's a bit of flexibility with how you can play the game. In terms of performance, I had no issues. We're running at 1080p, all the details are maxed out. I did change the brightness a little bit to make it a little bit easier to see on the screen. It's quite a dark game and there's also an option for the FOV lock. I toggled that so we get a better widescreen, a wider image so to speak. Uh, but in terms of performance I had no issues. I always play with VSync enabled for these captures because I don't want to have tearing in the video and yeah the game was silky smooth. I didn't notice any slowdowns. If you do feel like you can see some stuttering on the screen. This is because the physics engine runs at 30 FPS. That might be also to do with the console port legacy that sometimes the physics engine runs at half the frame rate. But I'm not sure, don't quote me. But it's something you can notice. There's apparently a tweak or a hack that you can apply. I'm not too fast about those sort of details. I'm happy to play vanilla as long as everything is bug free and works reliably. You can pick it up from GOG. There's also a remastered version if you want to play it on a more modern computer. I've never tried that one out. I like building old computers and playing the retro games. And yeah, you can get it DRM free, which means you put the installer on a USB, plug it into your computer. This retro PC, they never go online. Everything is done offline. You don't need to connect to the internet to download a launch or anything like that. That is the beauty. So all in all, I think Bioshock is an amazing game. If you haven't played it, what are you doing? Go out there, buy this game, play it. It is absolutely beautiful. If you haven't played it in a long time, yeah, give it another go. It is really awesome, especially the graphics, the art, the mood. It really sets you back into a different universe and I can't recommend it more highly enough. So guys, we've seen the 3D Mark results. We've tested a few games across the various resolutions. We played some Bioshock and it even handles Crisis. So yeah, my personal take on this video card. I love it. The performance is absolutely outstanding. I regret that I didn't buy this video card back in the day when it launched. Had I done that, I would have had two years of awesome gaming at high settings, high details, without having to worry about the latest and greatest Thing. This video card really shows what NVIDIA can do when they are faced with competition and they put their heads together and releasing an amazing product and they've done that many times. It is really a company that can deliver outstanding performance if they want to but we also saw that once they had the performance crown and ATI couldn't compete, yeah, they put the foot off the throttle and set back for around two years and all we got were 
recycled and respinned products with slightly different configurations but really nothing new and that's also something we can see to this day. So in terms of historic significance this video card is special indeed. It might attract a premium and can be somewhat hard to find. There are also different flavors. Some of them are slightly overclocked and of course there's the 8800 Ultra. Now should you rush out and buy one for retro gaming? It's not necessary. There are other cards like a 8800 GT, 9800 GT, 9800 GTX, GTX Plus, GTS, GTS 250, 8800 GTS 512. There are so many different flavors of this or a very similar GPU. So you should not have a hard time finding something very similar for a decent price. So all in all, the NVIDIA 8800 GTX gets the thumbs up. It's a really fantastic graphics card. I loved testing it. I'm happy to finally have it in my collection. And yeah, I want to hear from you now. 2006, 2007, what were you up to? What video card did you have? Did you rush out and buy the 8800 GTX or did you sit back and wait a little bit like I did? The hobby of building old computers to play classic games, it's really awesome. If you're new, well, consider subscribing to the channel. We have all sorts of interesting videos coming up and have a look at my Patreon page. Consider supporting me and my work. And that's it for this one. I shall see you soon, very soon, with another video.